Welcome back to Molding Our Monkeys, where we're on a journey to mold our monkeys and wanting you to come along. So you have a child who you suspect has dyslexia? What do you do next? Stick around and we're gonna talk about it. Welcome back to Molding Our Monkeys. This is part three in our series on dyslexia. If you haven't watched the first couple of videos, I suggest that you do that first before you dive into this one. Our, our series is based on this book called The Dyslexic Advantage, and I highly recommend everybody check it out. There's a link down below if you're interested in ordering that. So today we're gonna talk about the what if I have a child with dyslexia or somebody I suspect has dyslexia. The first thing I would suggest is early intervention. Um, if at a young age you think that a child has dyslexia, take some of the steps we're gonna talk about today as soon as you can. Also, um, maybe look into some outside help. I had a, a friend once tell me as a homeschool parent, their job is not to teach every subject. Their job is to facilitate learning. And if that involves bringing in a tutor or something like that, that's okay. You don't have to teach at all. So a couple of things to think about as you're teaching students with dyslexia and really a lot of these strategies will help kids of all sorts of learning styles. So the first thing would be to, to teach to your kids' learning style. If you're not sure what that means, we do have another Molding Our Monkeys video on learning styles that I suggest you look at. But it's, it's if, you know, if your kid learns better by getting up and moving, there might be a kinesthetic learner. If they need to see something, they're gonna be more of a visual learner, that sort of thing. So that's really important to be able to figure out your kids' learning styles so that you can better teach to them. Um, also to engage their, their interests and their background knowledge. What things have they already learned about? What things are they interested in? Um, teaching with games, discussions, multisensory approaches is a huge help to people with dyslexia. To assess one thing at a time. So if you're gonna assess your child's comprehension on a history lesson, they don't have to write a book report. If writing is a struggle for them, let them orally tell you what they read or let, you, let them build a diorama on the pyramid instead of having to type something up. If you were going to assess what they learned in a, a, like a book report, maybe they get to use like a talk to text function to get their words down on paper before they have to finalize um, punctuation and spelling and that sort of thing. When it comes to reading specifically, the Orton Gil Gillingham curriculum method is one of the best known curriculums for students with dyslexia. So a couple of examples of that would be the All About Reading program, which is what we use here and we love it. It's been amazing for all three of my kids that have been using it so far. Um, the Barton methods and the Logic of English curriculum are all um, well-known Orton Gillingham curriculums that I would suggest you check out if you've got somebody who's struggling reading. Um, before a child reads a passage, whether that's a nonfiction passage or a fiction passage, it's good to preview what they already know and activate their background knowledge. And also to say, okay, here's what we're gonna read about. Give them a little bit of a example, a little bit of a preview. Um, maybe that means listening to a summary passage, whether that's something you read to them um, our book that we're going through talks about like spark notes or cliff notes, letting them read a summary of the book before they start. Um, series, picking up a series of books is also really helpful to people with dyslexia because they can build on that background knowledge and they can kind of start developing that big picture that we've talked about in the last couple videos that help them connect the characters and the settings for the different stories. Um, also, one of the things that they had suggested is watch a movie before you give the kid the book. 
which in our house, a lot of times we do it the other way around. Let's read the book and then watch the video. But if they are able to watch the video first, then that helps them make the connections to what they're reading. It helps them get the gist of the book, like we've talked about in the last couple of videos also. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting in our book was a, a guided reading um, where if it's a passage that a child with dyslexia is struggling with, I read it, then we read it together, then you read it. Um, or reading with a recording, a book on CD that they could uh, listen to while they're reading the book. Another thing that's really important for kids with reading is exposure to many books, many topics that can come in read alouds, things that you read to them. Documentary films will give kids a lot of background knowledge, a lot of things that they can make these big picture connections with. Also just engaging kids in conversation about all sorts of things. All those are really good ways to help children, all children, not just children with dyslexia, but all children to learn vocabulary and start making connections to the bigger picture, the, the whole world that they're living in. Um, with writing, it's important for kids with dyslexia to master one step at a time before they have to move on. So they need to be able to master how to construct a sentence before they worry about what it looks like to write a paragraph. And if they can't write a paragraph, they're not gonna be able to write an essay. So we need to break that down, these steps a little bit more that, okay, here's, here's how we write a sentence. What do I need to do to write this sentence? I need to know the topic of the sentence. I need to know what a sentence should look like. I, sh I need to know how to write the sentence now that I've thought through those, now I can start writing the sentence. Now that I know how to write that sentence, how do I add more detail to make it a paragraph? And it's that big, big picture broken down into the individual steps that we need to make sure that we're teaching those individual steps to help connect that big picture. Um, also, let them start orally. So instead of, okay, physically write this sentence down, let them start figuring out that sentence structure by just talking to you, letting them tell you what sentence they want written. Um, also having examples out. So here's, here's some good sentences. Here's what a good essay will look like, whatever, wherever they're at in that writing process. Give them some examples that they can reference all the time. Another reference sheet that um, the book kept talking about is like a list of adjectives or a list of prepositions and some of these words that might be harder to come up with new and different words give them a list of words that are acceptable how many ways can we say said without saying the word said that sort of thing is super helpful for all kids not just kids with dyslexia Again, the, the talk to text as they're writing um, or trying to form a, a story or an essay, let them focus on one thing. Let them focus on their, getting their thoughts down on paper rather than the writing and the, um, the topic and all of that. Um, spell check. It's one of those things where I'm, as I'm thinking, I'm going, well, but spell check's gonna tell them how to spell it and then I'm not gonna know whether they know how to spell it. Well, is it a spelling test or is it a writing assignment? It, it's okay for kids to be typing up their report and using the spell check. Then they're gonna see that, see the correct spellings. Um, so we need to, as, as parents, as teachers, make sure that we're making these accommodations and understanding what we wanna get out of the assignment. What is that one thing we're assessing? A lot of times we, at least I do, I maybe shouldn't speak for everybody, but I try to lump multiple subjects together and that overloads many kids' brains, I think. Um, so just know what you're trying to assess, 
focus on connecting their background knowledge. Um, a couple other big picture ideas is help the kids uh, help the kids set realistic goals in areas of strengths and areas of struggles. Where do I want to be and how am I going to get there? Lay that out so they can see that. Um, you know, all kids are, are programmed to, to learn, just some are going to learn differently and, and that's okay. And they might learn in a roundabout way, they might learn a little bit slower, but they're all going to get there. And I love that as a homeschool parent, I'm able to see that and see see the kids' struggles and see their successes firsthand. So now I get to think through this as I'm processing through this book of how to better teach my kids. We've got a sign in our homeschool room over here that says, teach the heart, not the lesson. And, and it's just a good reminder to think, what are we here for? The, the academics are important, but what's what's the the real goal of educating our kids so i hope you've enjoyed the series so far on dyslexia be looking out for some more videos coming up to continue this series you can find the book you can find links to some of our other videos down below and thanks for watching <laughs> i don't remember the first thing you said who you might suspect. Oh. So that's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. It's not on my notes. <laughs> Grab me a pen, would you? <laughs>